What is good? We got the gang back, ready to roll. Ready to roll. We talked a little bit about some guys you needed to know who were maybe a little off the radar for, for the common folk, but I don't think anybody really needs any introduction to either one of these two players, but they're both on Texas. We're going to talk a little Xavier Worthy, a little A.D. Mitchell. Seemed like one guy started off his career really hot and has kind of maybe tapered off a little bit, and the other guy had, had been has been, you know, rising up uh, through the ranks a little faster than maybe anybody thought he might, or at least I did. I was, certainly wasn't on my radar to maybe start this season to be where he is right now, but I wanted to figure out if if that's the way we feel about it. So uh, we got Snoog over there. What's up, man? How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm excited to jump back on with you guys and talk some more rookie prospects. And of course, we got our guy, Austin. If we're talking rookies at the FFD, Austin's holding us down. What's up, fellas? How's everybody doing? Uh, we're, we're, we're doing well. We're ready to roll. Uh, Snoog, where can we find you before we get rolling? Yeah, you can find me at FF Snoog on Twitter. All my, all my Patreon, my podcast, everything in there is linked in my bio. I have a link tree set up there for all my work. I'm constantly posting daily, multiple times a day, just dynasty, rookie, anything fantasy football related. So make sure you check out all my work there. Yeah, the guy, the guy's about it. So make sure you go check all that out. Uh, but let's let's jump into it. Let's let's go Xavier. Wer- Actually, let's go Ad Mitchell first. We'll go with the uh, the six four hundred ninety six pounder. Looks like he's going to be twenty one in October, from what I could see. Had a high ankle in twenty two at. Uh, Georgia and then obviously transferring over to Texas to be with Quinn Ewers and really actually going through this tape I was really got more and more in love with with Quinn Ewers I was really liked what Quinn Ewers is doing for a lot of this season but that's a that's a different discussion so Snoog where where do you come in on on AD Mitchell I actually was super impressed with his film I know the analytics absolutely hate Adonai Mitchell more than anything in the world but the film was great. I mean, he's projected a 6'4 wide receiver, but the way he moves, mm. he has such nuance in his step. His route running is very good. He separates fluently. I did a whole 20 plus clip thread on him just on film, like clippets of his route running and his separation skills and his ability to make plays downfield. Like he is so good in that down in that red zone area at Georgia at texas he was just used in those yeah. one-on-one design plays like here you go here's an arrow route here's a slant let's see what you can do we saw him absolutely cook cooley mckenzie a few times at, against bama this year at texas and then we saw him come up big time there in georgia as a true freshman hitting 400 plus yards on a stacked roster like they had brock powers who's the best tight end prospect ever arguably Lad mcconkey some other stud so it's definitely a profile that needs context banged up sophomore year didn't really play much i think he played in two or three games and then had a nice stretch in the playoffs there the, the the where the bread and butter is is his texas season i mean 11 touchdowns he, he just couldn't stay out of the end zone and it's kind of funny because it was almost like that was how xavier worthy was 21 touchdowns in two years adonai mitchell comes and their rows flipped. Mm-hmm. And I think it just is because he's a six four wide receiver that moves really fluently. He's in that like T. Higgins, Michael Pittman type mold where they're just such fluid movers and they can separate, they can run routes, they can make plays downfield. That's kind of where why I'm higher on him than a lot of people. I know a lot of the analytics people like hate him and don't even have him in the top ten. It seems like NFL mocks and draft like databases have him like in that early second and sometimes slipping into that late first range. Um, but I think just the way he moves, I mean, I, I've seen him take ankles for days against some of these DBs, some high level DBs like Kool Aid's going to be a top pick. Terry and Arnold's going to be a top pick. Like first round corners, he was cooking Bama and he makes some crazy catches. Like the way he tracks the ball over his shoulder downfield and can adjust to the ball and make plays. Like you don't see that at guys his size. So I, I, I kind of comped him out to kind of like an Alan Hearns type of receiver. Ooh, throwback. Yeah, that's a guy that gave you a thousand yards and had some big years and was great from time to time. And then I think like a floor comp, you could give him DJ Chark, who was another thousand yard receiver. I think his skill set is really safe at the NFL level. And in the right situation, you could see a 1200 plus yard, 10 touchdown season from a guy like that. Like 
when a guy that that big, I think he's going to probably be like a six, three guy. I don't think he's a true six, four. Mm-hmm. I think when you can move like that though, run routes like that and make plays downfield, like you don't have to be some yards after catch merchant, right? Like he's really good at what he does. Like we saw Allen Robinson, we've seen guys like even Michael Gallup, a little bit smaller, but it thrived downfield and in contested catch situations. Then we saw a guy like Rashi Rice, who was kind of like that coming out of college, turn into a yak merchant in the NFL. So his profile definitely needs context. Like I said, the analytics stink, but he did break out as a true freshman. Like he was right on the verge of that threshold, mm-hmm. disappointing sophomore year, leaves Georgia as a stellar junior year alongside Xavier Worthy, who's a arguably a first round talent in my opinion Mm -hmm. so i'm curious austin i know you're a big brian thomas jr guy because i I saw your thread or your video on him recently where does adonai mitchell compare to you with brian thomas jr because a lot of people kind of view them the same like six foot four fluid movers excels downfield where does adonai mitchell kind of stand in your rankings do you think he'll be a first round pick in the nfl draft and how do you expect him to test yeah, man. Uh, a lot of good content. A lot of good, uh, uh, good questions too. So I have Brian Thomas Jr. candidly in front of him right now. He's my 109 in Dynasty Superflex rookie drafts, um, and I have Adonai Mitchell around the 205 range. Um, that's where I have him right now. I'll probably change that a little bit, um, but he is comfortably in front of him. He's he's easily a tier above him. Um, Brian Thomas Jr. That is. Uh, but A.D. Mitchell, man, right, I think you said it very well when you said, you know, you were basically touching on his production and saying, like, it wasn't necessarily there, like, 50 receptions, 800 yards, 10 touchdowns. Like, they're respectable numbers, but I liked how you were talking about the film, and you mentioned that that was significantly more telling, right? I agree with you. I thought his film was more telling. I thought that uh, he did look fluid. You know, six four, hundred ninety six pounds. He's probably, and and again, I agree with you on this too. I think he's gonna come in around six foot three, closer to that height. Um, I think he's going to be. I think it's gonna be a second round pick. I don't necessarily know where. I'm I'm kind of. I'm thinking that A.D. Mitchell will be closer mid to second, uh, mid second round. That that's right now where I'm at. A few months ago, like two months ago, man, I I thought A.D. Mitchell had a chance at sneaking into the to late first, and I was hoping for Buffalo. I was hoping for Casey, but we're gonna see who who gets him in the second round. Right now, I don't I don't really think there's a world that exists. Even if he crushes the combine, I don't think A.D. Mitchell is a first round pick. Um, but I and I don't know how I don't know if this is a hot take. I don't know if people agree with me on this, man. I think A.D. Mitchell is capable of running a full route tree. I thought he had very good awareness um, and I can't stress how vital it is to properly separate. All right. Something that I never really thought was an is- issue for A.D. Mitchell. Um, again, we're, we're going to see some promising draft capital uh, and let's have fun with it, man. Like like let's manifest him going to the chiefs. I think he would be sick alongside with Rashi rice, like six foot four Mahomes could use another big dog in that offense. We don't know what Travis Kelsey's future holds. We know that the two time super bowl champion Kadarius Tony isn't necessarily, uh, (laughs) it's not anything special. Uh, and you know, they're, they're just going to need to get another receiver too, whether they like it or not. I know that they just won back to back rings, but you know, Casey, it's scary, man. Casey, has room for growth and and their offense is going to be better next year so it'll be exciting to see which receiver it's and at this point we know they're going to take a receiver it's just a matter of who so yeah Yeah. i'm a sucker for people that can run good routes separate and make plays downfield especially when you're covered because when when you're that type of receiver that can make plays even when you're covered that kind of separates you from like the good and the great receivers like if if because you can't always get open coaches can scheme you open but if you can make plays even when you're not considered open i think that kind of gives you like a, a separation gap like you see like justin jefferson the cd lambs making plays through traffic consistently like your quarterback needs to give you a shot to make a play on the ball and you need to make that play and we saw that all over adonai mitchell's film so yeah. Casey, i'm curious kind of where you stand on adonai mitchell and like do you like those type of like six four fluid movers or those guys that you usually draw off your draft boards like the quentin johnsons and the Traylon burks no no i i i like 
I like those guys. I mean, obviously the, the two guys that you mentioned didn't quite work out. I think they're especially Traylon, you know, quite a bit different from, from what they did and, and, and definitely Quentin Johnston too. I think AD Mitchell is certainly a little bit more refined than Quentin Johnston was. I mean, I, unfortunately Quentin Johnston got put in a position where I thought, I thought he was a little bit more of a project with, with, with good intangibles for, for a guy, his size, but maybe wasn't quite ready for where he was thrust into, mm-hmm. uh, but was, wasn't nearly as high as some people on Quentin Johnston, but no, I, I like A.D. Mitchell, but again, I don't I don't think I'm Sky. I'm not going to be, you know, caping for for A.D. Mitchell. I don't think, you know, Brian, Brian Thomas is firmly. I'd, I'd much rather have Brian Thomas Jr. Um, than A.D. Mitchell. I kind of went up and down with A.D. through the whole film process. It was like uh, days, some days I'd be pretty like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm fucking with this guy. And then other days it'd be like, man, I, I don't know. There's There's some things that I just didn't love but you know the the red zone uh, you know seem seeming to have a knack for the red zone the slants and the arrow routes like you said seem to be really good in the vertical threat once again for these bigger guys seems to be a little bit of a common thread that seems to be his best quality to be able to get open uh, you know much like baker you talked about who maybe isn't the blazingest of speeds but just figures out how to stack you and get ahead of you um mm-hmm. and you mentioned those those two d-backs for um alabama you know you 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 saw even when, um, you know, he did get e- either he's catching one over him for a touchdown or they're holding him. Uh, so you, know, yeah. you like to see that, 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 that's, that's what you want to see at an AD Mitchell. I, I wouldn't take him in the first round in the NFL draft either. Um, I'd, I'd have him certainly in the second round. Mm-hmm. He's, I, I don't know. He's kind of graded out as just eh for me. Like I'm not, I'm not hot and heavy, but I'm not out by any means. It's basically in the rookie draft. As far as fantasy goes, he, there has to be, there's probably going to be somebody who likes him more than I do. I, I think yeah. it's kind of the player that he's going to end up for, for me anyway. Yeah. He was a player that I was really hot on at first glimpse. And then I started to kind of steer away from him a little bit. He's still going to be in that seven to 10 range for me. The thing that just drives me the most crazy about him is he had, two games over three receptions, not counting yeah. the playoffs. Well, that was it's like, yeah. Kind of like, disappears every once in a while. That was Brian Thomas Jr. Every once in a while too disappears yeah. from time to time. Obviously neighbors on the other side and we're yeah. on the other side. So exactly. can be understandable, but you know, I, I don't, you don't want to see that, but uh, yeah. big, big TD numbers. So you, so you like to see that. Yeah. I think that's, what's tough with AD Mitchell too. Cause he, he never could escape like the elite talent surrounding him, like Jatavian Sanders, Xavier Worthy, Jordan Whittington, and then at Georgia, I mean, Brock Bowers, Lyle McConkey. I think he played one year with Pickens, his freshman year. Potentially. But I think actually Pickens tore his ACL that year, maybe. I, I don't know, but I, I, I just think it's, the, like I said, the film, like the way he has really, really good traits, but he's not good after the catch and – he disappears and then he comes and then he disappears. Yeah. And then it's like, wow, this guy's a top five receiver in this class. He looks phenomenal. And then you're like, where the hell is AD Mitchell? Yeah. So I just think it could be maybe playing alongside elite talent all those years. Cause that does happen sometimes and you can get lost in the sauce a little bit, but elite red zone threat, really good in the contested catch situations can separate good moves. fluidly. I thought the hands were pretty good. Yeah, I do too. I uh, I actually want to mention one thing about contested catches that that was a red flag for me. Um, so like out of the top ten projected rookie wide receivers, uh, Xavier Worthy. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Adonai Mitchell was ninth out of out of these top ten projected rookie receivers in contested catches in 2023. Like he only had four, which was really alarming. It was really bad actually for someone who was six foot three or six foot four allegedly and uh the contested catch percentage in 2023 he was eighth out of the top 10 projected rookie receivers it was 36.4 uh four out of 11 so i was discouraged by that for, again for someone who's six foot four i just thought he would be better especially with quinn ewers in those contested catches um it was just it was another sp- I don't even want to call it a small knock. It was like kind of a bigger knock that I had on him. So, um, yeah, I, I'm with you guys. Like, I couldn't take him in the first round of the NFL draft if I was an NFL GM. It, it would have to be mid to late second. He would almost kind of have to fall to me, if that makes sense, where I was more comfortable with, with value, right? That's kind of where I'm at. Yeah, same. So, I mean, obviously, we're, we're 
started this video off as, you know, A.D. Mitchell was the guy who was ascending a little faster and, and Worthy had kind of tapered off. Uh, it seems like there's going to be a little bit more Worthy love on this podcast. Not that I don't think anybody's down on on A.D. per se, uh, but let's uh let's let's kick it over to the worthy side of things uh and and snoog you've been you've been leading us off so you know lead us off one last time yeah worthy is definitely a top three favorite for me just as a player as a position in, in the class in general i mean you got neighbors and brian thomas i'm a huge neighbors fan like that's like i got like he was one of the few wideouts because i just started getting into it into like heavy into like in like 2020 2021 ish Garrett Wilson was a guy I watched every year at college. Like loved them all years. And Malik Neighbors is that for me. He was like that true, like Debbie Darling for me. I had him in my only Debbie draft when he was a freshman, had that big sophomore breakout, just a guy that I've loved. So it's exciting. Now it's like, all right, everybody knows how good he is. And he's, it's like, I can't really talk about him anymore like that. Cause it's just, everybody knows now. And everybody knew last year, like he's a guy that's just phenomenal, but X man, he has the best I, – I did a whole analytic breakdown, charted out, like, the most important things, yards per out run, oh receiving I mean, yards. The, the analytical passes. side of, of – complete opposite, right? Yeah. Of the, Mitchell. Yeah, and Worthy was the best true freshman of all time in college football. Like, And I don't I, – I comped him with Amari Cooper, C.D. Lamb, Jamar, like, all the best of the best. And he was the best in almost everything. 12 touchdowns, 981 yards, 62 receptions, absolutely dominated. And the thing with Xavier Worthy that stands out, speed demon, he's probably going to be one of the fastest wide receivers in his class. He was a track star in high school. He's going to run in the four threes, and I'm so confident in it, which is why I think he's going to be a first-round NFL draft pick. People are like a little cooled off on him right now, like NFL-wise. I haven't seen him in the first round in like one mock. But I'm like, they're going to get lived in the first round game. for the last two yeah. years and then yeah. cooled a it's, little here. It's crazy. 21 total touchdowns in two years as like an 18 and 19 year old. It's like, come on. Like, I don't care if he's playing in any division. Like he's playing in the Big 12. He played against good competition. Best thing about him, what he did in the Red River games, he always showed up in the biggest games on the biggest stage for his team against the biggest rivalry in college football, arguably. Like this guy, I think he had like 300 something yards in three games against them, torched them, like absolutely mm -hmm. phenomenal. Scored touchdowns, made plays. For, when he was a true freshman, he made back-to-back -back multiple big plays, scored a touchdown to put his team up. They ended up losing that game, but he just absolutely dominated. And I see so much, I see nuance in his route running. He's great, right? He's good at all intermediate and vertically, especially. The issue with him, I mean, he's still only 20 years old, speed demon. Like I said, the production profile is strong, good yards per out run numbers at the 2.2 plus threshold. The one concern about him is the drops. And I'm sure everybody on here has seen that. There were some bad ones this year. There were some bad ones last year against Bama. He probably has and probably one of the best production profiles in this class if he didn't drop the ball so much. But mm. that's something that you can polish up, right? Like, that's happened to so many good prospects in the past and then they they start to polish that up especially with nfl coaching staffs but i mean he had 26 total touchdowns in three years at texas hit a thousand yards and 75 plus receptions this past year all he did was produce when he was on the football field yeah. he stayed healthy ran good routes made good plays after the catch explosive explosive player started off the red river game as a true freshman with an 80 plus yard touchdown on a screen pass it's like this kid just has it in his blood and he's just a competitor. I can see him easily being a first round NFL draft pick. And he's my wide receiver six right now in a tier with Brian Thomas Jr. and Troy Franklin. Love it. Yeah. Well, I mean, Austin, why don't, why don't you give us a little Xavier Worthy before? Because uh, I yeah. think I'm about where you are with him, Snoog. What, uh, what are your thoughts on, on Worthy? You, you, are you yeah. gonna be the lone Mitchell guy over worthy, or what do you what do you got? No, no, no. I I absolutely have Xavier Worthy over over eighty Mitchell, but I think you guys are are more bullish on him than I am. I I can't. 
put him in the same tier as Brian Thomas Jr. Mm. That that's where I'm at. Maybe I just like Brian Thomas Jr. a little too much, and that's okay. It's like I'll, <laughs> I'll happily admit that. But uh, Snoop, you, you brought up a lot of great points, man. I think I think he can definitely Xavier Worthy. That is be problematic at the next level. I mean, having nearly a thousand yards as a true 18 year old freshman, it really does not happen, you know, few and far between. And the fact that he did that, you mentioned 12 touchdowns, you know, during his rookie campaign and something that I need to bring up, man, target share over 30%, 18 years old, like stupid dude. Like this, just this stuff doesn't happen. And Xavier worthy really popped off right out of the gate, man. He put himself on the map, you know, six foot, 172 pounds. He is still 20 years old you mentioned it man it's it's crazy how young he is and i really like that because while he is still very flawed in a lot of ways it's okay man like these these kids are so young like they're they're so far from being polished and again 20 years old man like he's got so much time to develop and just become a better route runner just a more polished all around wide receiver it's going to happen his stock is going to continue to rise as well i believe it cuz he's going to test really well a lot of these guys we're talking about today they they're going to test very well at the NFL combine right like you mentioned 43 speed you're probably right. I think it's going to be between 43, 435. There's a chance he runs a 428, dude. Like there's a chance. He's he's that quick. Uh he goes from 0 to 60, you know, quicker than than most cars. Like Xavier Worthy can move, man. And and remember this. He he dominated some ranked teams. He dominated when it matters most, man. 5 for 75 and a touchdown against third ranked Alabama. 8 for 108 against 12th ranked Oklahoma. Uh 86 yards against uh, Oklahoma State and then 93 yards against Kansas like Xavier Worthy he has that high upside that you want all your dynasty assets to have um, there and now I want to take it back a notch I do want to tell you guys about s- some of the concerns I have in yards per route run Xavier Worthy was 2.14 which was fine right that was eighth amongst the top 10 um, but what worried me was the contested catches in 2023 he ranked uh, he, he only had five, which which was an okay number. It was a little bit on the lower side, but but the big problem was he was last out of the top ten in uh in the percentage for contested catch percentage. It was twenty three point eight. He was five for twenty one. So he really Xavier really really struggled in contested catches, and you know I I get it. It's not his game, right? He's fast and. Uh, it's okay, man. I, I think he can still succeed in the NFL. And like I mentioned, 20 years old, like he's still got so much to learn. He's going to be, he's going to continue to become more polished. He's going to get better. And I think he's going to be an interesting early second round pick. I think he's going to go early second round with a chance of him going first. I don't think it's going to happen, but, but it's a poss- there's a possibility. Yeah. I mean, you, you guys hit, hit a bunch of it. I'm, I'm, I'm Xavier over, over AD. Uh, I, I got him in the same tier. I, I, some days I'm, I wake up and put him at the top of that tier over Thomas and Franklin. I, I really like him and I like I like the game that he that that he could possess. Seems like he can do a lot more than those other guys right off the rip for you. Um, those other guys can get you vertical and do other things. But again, not the ascension that you necessarily wanted after stepping on the field as a true freshman for for Worthy. So kind of two different trajectories for these two guys right now. I'm still okay with it. I'm not sure he's going to be a first rounder right now. It's, it's going to be okay if, that if he is great, if he isn't, whatever. There's going to be a log jam in the second round of, of great wide receivers as well. Um, speed and quickness are both at an elite level, high level, uh, which you know you, you don't see. Yeah, at least I haven't seen a lot through all these guys through the top five. Or they usually have one or the other, mm-hmm. um, and and worthy I think has both here I'm going to say probably some of the same things as I said as Ladd McConkey like you get into this and you have guys who play similar and you need to bust the thesaurus out because there's only so many ways to say uh a lot of these things um but you know he, he can play inside or out they had him out wide at 62 percent and 23 and 37 percent in the slot I think you would be doing a disservice to him by sticking him outside and saying hey win here consistently um, yeah you know, just like I said with with McConkey, like most of the smaller frame guys are going to hear, well, he can't beat press consistently. I mean, sure, a physical corner can get down on him and, and jam him up. But again, you'd be silly to have him just go out wide and stay out wide like you need to. We talked about it again on that on the last show. Motion is is the key to all the good offenses in the league right now. Like 
what the Eagles were one of the most stationary offenses this past year. And look where it got them. It got them to having all sorts of problems. Um, yeah. All the elite lead leading offenses, or at least most of them have a ton of motion to get their best players, the mismatch that they need and their quarterback, you know, the designation of the read to where to go with the ball. So worthy, I think just fits perfectly into what's going on in the league in 23, which is why I like him so much. He can get you vertical and he can get you on the intermediate stuff. Um, I, you know, I did hear and read some stuff where people were saying where they, they weren't sure if he could play in the middle of the field because of the slight frame. I would say, I don't think that's really true at all. Sure. I did. I see him go down on first contact some. Yeah. You're going to see a 172 pound guy go down on first contact some, but you also see him deliver a stiff arm and take it to the house against Oklahoma uh, in that red river rivalry and, and multiple times of absorb contact. So Sometimes I think with the smaller frame guy, when they see one or two, hey, he gets jammed. And it just it's the same thing over and over in these write ups with these smaller frame guys. A lot of the time yeah. it's, you know, it's and I don't I don't think it's not true, but I think I think sometimes you got to take it with a grain of salt. Hey, you go down to the bottom, you see the three games that they watched for these guys that they scouted it with. And you're like, all right, well, yeah, maybe that game. But if you go put this tape on. He's stiff arming a guy at the line of scrimmage and running 70 yards. So yeah. um, I think he can do all that kind of stuff. Uh, but like I said, I think he's 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 tailor made for um, an offense in 2023 moving forward into the league. I think he has really quick feet. And again, I think his release is really good, you know, at, at the line. So good luck jamming him. If you don't get your hands on him, you got a problem on your hands. Like you, you better jam him. And, a, the, you know, the guys who are going to have success coming down on him are going to be the bigger physical corner. So you come down and you get him, you better get him because if not, he's scoring. Um <laughs> And on top of that, you guys mentioned the drops and the contact, the contested catch stuff, you know, and, and you alluded to it a little bit. The drops, I don't believe it's a it's a super sticky stat when you look at it overall and projecting players. I mean, you look at, uh, you know, the league leaders that Puka dropped a ton of balls this year. Nobody gives a shit. You know, yeah. well, if you're a fringe guy then you're and you were late cap, I mean, obviously it didn't affect Puka, but like it can affect a fifth, sixth, seventh round guy who's getting on the field every once in a while. If you're a mainstay on the field, I'm not terribly worried about drops unless you're Kadarius Tony and you've been in the yeah. league for three years and on a different team. And basically you're an asshole and you can't, you know, can't keep your shit together. <laughs> um, you know, that that's a bigger problem, which, you know. I was one of the guys who was like, I'm never trading to Kadarius Tony. He'll die on my roster. The raw talent's so much fun. But hey, I I I took that one on the chin. I knew he was a jerk, but eh, it didn't didn't quite work out. Anyway, drops not terribly sticky. I don't believe the contested catch you mentioned at Austin. Don't really think it's a strong suit. It's not really part of the game that I need it to be. I don't need him to be some, you know, I need Keon Coleman and, and Baker and, 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 uh, AD Mitchell to be strong contested catch guys. Xavier worthy. I don't necessarily need him to be, uh, all that strong of a, of a contested catch guy. So that's kind of where I'm at. And I, I ended up really, really liking Xavier worthy. I know that the analytics like him a lot, which is again, not my, not my cup of tea per se, but I want to, I want all the information for the roadmap of figuring things out. And, you know, it's, it's certainly a way to eliminate mistakes and, and try to condense them down to, uh, you know, not screwing this up because sometimes, you know, yes, we want to take the swings for the, for the fences, but we also want to mitigate risk a little bit. Sometimes it's, you know, yeah, you want to take swings, but you also want to just get like, there's a lot of upside here, but I think there's a lot of floor here too. So I just, it feels like it's just like AD Mitchell. I, I'm a little worried about, you know, the floor sometimes, you know, I think the ceiling's certainly there, but it, where's the floor at with Xavier yeah. worthy. I, I, I just feels, it feels safe. He feels like he can do a lot of different things. So uh, that, that's kind of my, my rant on Xavier worthy. Anybody have anything else on these two prospects before we get out of here? The final thing I'll mention about Xavier Worthy, and this is a question for both of you guys. Uh, I believe the at this point, like I believe the biggest question that you have to ask yourself is if Xavier Worthy beefs up his frame in the NFL, do you guys think he'll still be able to keep like 90% of his speed? And and do you want him to? Like, how do you guys feel about that? Yeah, Zay Flowers put on like 15 pounds for the combine. I don't know if you guys saw that, that comparison. It was like 180 to 193 or 194. And he still ran like a four, four, two or something. So I think if they do it the right way, I, I think he's probably going to be like 170, 168 ish in that range. But like, I'm, 
I'm starting to be in that like size doesn't matter anymore. Like look at Josh Downs. Telling girls that now, ever. Like, <laughs> it's just there's just so many talented small receivers now in the league. Devontae Smith was like yeah. the number one guy that proved that wrong. I, I see a lot of Devontae Smith comps with Worthy. I think Worthy's like a Devontae Smith light. Like he is one of the quickest first steps in the class. I, I mentioned his speed, that elite speed. He's gonna crush the combine. He I just did this conversion before here. 10.55 hundred meter dash in high school at 16 years old. That converts to a 43940. Like this kid, I think it's like safe to say he runs in the four threes, even if he bulks up. Yeah. Um game speed and 40 time is different. Like you True. you can confidently say that, like how you play in pads versus if you're good at technique and running a 40, that that does matter. But the NFL loves it. Like the NFL loves seeing the guys absolutely blaze in the 40 yard dash and look fast, yeah. even if it's in shorts. So I think that's good for his draft capital that we all know he's going to be an elite athlete. I think I'd like to see him play at 175. Like Jordan Addison is a guy that was in that 170s, low 170 range. I think he'll he'll be around that range. And they say he's six one. He'll probably be like six feet, five eleven and a half. But yeah, yeah, no, I I, I agree. I, I think it's more important for him to go out there and just confirm how fast he is and yeah. and and crush it rather than bulk up a, a ton. As long mm-hmm. as you know, I'm okay with you bulking up a little bit and padding your stats if if you're still going to run fast. And those are all things we talk about this all the time at the combine. Like you've got a shitty team around you if if you if you can't figure out that hey maybe you shouldn't run the three cone drill or hey you know maybe we maybe we we bulked up a little bit but hey maybe we should trim that back off let's let's shave this point 10 you know whatever the seconds are yeah um so they should know that going into it and have that all figured out um Mm -hmm. i don't i think the speed is going to be there and you know the at this point in the nfl i don't think anybody's terribly worried about size at the at where we're at right now uh the way the game is played, the way they attack the middle, you know, nope. Sure. Guys are getting lit up here and there, but, and tank Dell didn't, didn't necessarily make it through his rookie season, but shit happens. I mean, he could go three more years without being injured. Um, so I don't, I'm not terribly concerned over, over size. I know that hurts the size of feelings. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, 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 I'm real into Xavier worthy. So uh, final thoughts on the room here. One thing I want to point out is remember how fast we thought Jalen Hyatt was in game speed. Like we thought he was going to be a blazing four, two guy and he was a four, four guy. So even if worthy runs a four, four or four, four, two, like he's still so fast and that's still a fast 40 time. Like his elite short area quickness. He's good after the catch. One of the quickest first steps in the class. So I'm so excited about him. I, I want to, I like almost try not to be too biased with him, And like, I want to move him up to like five, but like, mm-hmm. It's hard putting them over Thomas and Franklin, but like you said, Casey, there is days I wake up and I'm like, shit, where are, the, are you my wide receiver four? Or <laughs> yeah. are you staying at six? And I, I think it, that tier will shape itself up over the process, like during the combine, during the draft process and stuff. Yeah. But I, it's almost like locked and loaded. Brian Thomas is my four. Like I think the draft capital is going to be premium. So Yeah, I agree. And did Austin, did you, did you slot worthy for us? Um, I have worthy, I believe, at the two oh three in my rankings. Uh, right now he's, yeah, early second round pick in dynasty superflex rookie drafts. Is that is that kind of where you're at? A lot of people have him there. I yeah. have him probably like one ten, one oh nine. Oh, I'm sorry, two oh two, two oh two. Okay. So yeah, I have him late first. I think, yeah. I think, uh, Austin, you're probably a little bit more on consensus. I think I'm a little more bullish, and and Snoog, you seem to be a little bit as well. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, really like him. And I think, I think the analytical people will, will, will support the, the worthy case. And then, you know, I think some people will find some of the things that we talked about and say, Hey, not, not good here. Not good. There didn't, mm-hmm. didn't keep the ascension up. So we're going to keep him yeah. in that, in that two, two to two, five range. Cause I'm sure at some, I think some of these running backs are eventually going to, you know, I don't know who I'm it's going to yeah. be. Or they're they're going to come in this mix a little bit. JT Sanders is going to be in the mix somewhere there in tight end premium. Um, and there, you mm-hmm. know, I don't know if there'll be a third tight end that ascends, whether it be Theo Johnson or, um, who's the guy from Kansas or Kansas state. Ben Stinott or yeah. Stinott. yeah. So, um, not a super strong tight end class. Um, and then, you know, I think the quarterback draft capital, however that lands will probably sort out some of that early twos as well. Yeah, um, definitely. So cool. Yeah. All right. Snoop, where can we find your stuff while we get out of here? 
Yeah, at FF Snoog on Twitter. You can find everything in my bio. I got the link tree set up for you all. You got the Patreon in there, the podcast at Smash Accept with Dynasty Dad. We're posting every Tuesday, but the Twitter, that's where all the rookie stuff's coming. We're going to have pre-draft rankings, pre-combine, pre-everything, and we're always going to be updated. We're very fluid during the process, and, and I'll give reasons. Like I'll tell you if I don't like a prospect and why. I, I don't pray for their downfalls, but I'll tell you the weaknesses I see. Like I'm lower on guys like Tez Walker, Johnny Wilson, and even Keon Coleman a little bit, even though I think he's a, an extremely talented athlete, but I just see a lot of raw profile in his game. But I'll, I'll, I'll tell both sides of it. So check check me out on Twitter. Threads are going out. We're going to be diving into the running backs and the quarterbacks soon. I'm excited for that running back class. Definitely a weaker one compared to the most in the most previous years. But I do see like five to eight guys that are starting caliber or like decent players that could get some boosted draft capital with a good combine. Yeah, no, make sure you go check that out. And Austin, of, of course, uh, putting out some some great uh, rookie content of his own down on his Twitter. So where can we find everything for you, Austin? Yep, at Austin Abbott FF on Twitter. I'm everywhere, but primarily on Twitter more than anything else. And I'm, again, putting out daily content just pertaining to draft. Uh, I have my rankings there as well. And uh, just really, really focusing on these rookie evaluations every single day, just trying to dive into more and more. So as we get closer to the combine and the NFL draft, things are just going to get more exciting, man. So uh, if you got 2024 first, man, you should be excited. This is going to be this is a fun class. Yeah, it's, it's fun and, and deep. Uh, so, I mean, which some of these guys that we talked about today and, and on some of these other names to know they're the third round's even going to be fun. And some of that will get sorted out. Some of these guys will drop down a little bit in the third round won't be quite yeah. as fun. But I mean, there's going to be some good names just like last year leading off the, the top of the third. I think there's going to be some guys who can help your roster even in that third round here. we got a lot of names and a lot of fun uh, running backs and receivers. So uh, appreciate everybody. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment below. Five star if you're listening on the podcast. You can check us out on the Patreon. Uh, you can get in the Discord with a $5 holler. We're, we're doing slow mocks. Uh, we'll be back. I don't know when you guys will see this show, but we'll be back doing live shows once or twice uh, a month here and doing some drafts and, and talking rookies in there and we'll do st startups we got slow startups in the discord we got adp be being built as we speak uh we are building um rookie profiles and and a rookie um rookie pages for all the rookies uh that'll be available on the patreon here uh in the coming months so be sure to check all that out appreciate you snoog appreciate you uh austin let's get the ff out of here we'll catch you next time peace <laughs>